Welcome to the Master the Crab YouTube channel. If you are not yet subscribed to this channel, please do so. And if you can, please leave a like under this video. I gladly, gladly appreciate it. So today we're going to talk about um, a few things. Um, many of you actually know, not many of you, none of you really know this because I didn't really talk about it a lot. But, um, uh, you know, at five years old, um, I had a very, very traumatic experience. Um, I was actually, actually molested by my uncle when I was five years old. Um, mom was at work. Um, and, you know, I got out the shower. Um, at that age, I was well aware of what a shower was and what the tub what the tub was. Um I knew how to start my water, I know how to do all that stuff. I didn't need my mom there to to do that. Um so on my way back into my room after getting out of um the shower, um I was pinned down um on my bed by my uncle. Um and he molested me basically, um, filled me up and did all types of stuff. I don't really want to get too into the details because it still kind of makes me upset and I still have not gotten over it yet. But, um, and it's crazy after all these years, you would think I'd be over it, but I'm actually still not over it. This is why I have the disdain for things, certain things, but we'll get into that. Um, literally held me down, um, with all his strength, all his muscle and had his way with a five year old. Um, thinking back on it, I'm just, I used to ask God, why me? I used to ask God a lot of things. Um, and he never would answer me. But now that I'm older, I actually kind of understand. Um, these things are a part of what makes me today. These things are what made me stronger. A stronger man. Um, the strong man that I am today. Um, these situations have helped me out a lot. Um, this man, and he did it more than once. Um, this is twice this happened. Um, my innocence just took in at an early age. Um, my uncle used to come over a lot and play video games and hang with us a lot. Um, and my mom trusted him enough to let him watch us while she worked like a dog. Cause my mom was an RN. She was a nurse and she worked crazy hours, seven to seven, seven to 11 or whatever. She would work crazy hours. So she literally trusted this man and um he came and just and did that um took advantage of of me when i was five years old um me not knowing anything about sex or anything sexual just me having my innocence stripped from me and i remember i didn't tell my mom right away i waited literally a week uh, what happened was i told my school counselor because me and the school counselor was very very close um and she took a liking to me so I remember telling her and tell her not to tell my mom, but she told my mom anyway, but that's their job to, to report. I couldn't, I can't tell the count school counselor something and expect them not to tell my mother. Um, so I remember when, how my mother reacted. I remember all the tears she cried and how angry she was. And I'm thankful that I had a mother that, you know, that was like, well, that's not happening. I don't believe you this and that, but she really, really took, um, the initiative to seek out the police and get things um, moving as far as getting my uncle thrown in jail, which happened for four years. He was in jail for four years, um, got out and um, literally started going to church. But after that point, after that happened, my mom did not let him anywhere near me. Um, she didn't let me go over his house and she definitely didn't let him come over our house. Um, she kept me far away from him and she actually cut him off. She stopped talking to him. Um, and he's actually no longer with us. He passed away a couple years ago. Um, but these situations are part of the reason why I view uh, homosexual homosexuality the way that I do. And why I have the dislike for it that I do. Um, I don't have an issue with anybody in what they do behind closed doors in their personal life. God gave us all a life. But what I do have an issue with is when I'm associated with it. Um, when I never took a liking to it, um, I never thought about it. I've never been really, you know, exposed to it to the point where, um, I was entertaining doing the action or performing the action 
Uh, and this is why I look at it the way I look at it. Um, I don't have no issue with what anybody does in their life. It's not my concern. Um, I'm only responsible for Justin and what Justin does. So, uh, yeah. So, over the course of my life, I've had various situations that ended up very, very bad. They knocked me back. When you feel as though you're getting past a certain situation, there's always something that comes along that knocks you six feet back or two steps back or five steps back or whatever. It knocks you back in some way, shape, or form. Um, had people that I moved in with that I trusted um, that, you know, was wolves in sheep's clothing that came in the name of friendship, that came in the name of brotherhood. Um, moved in with, with a guy friend of mine's um, because me and my grandmother was at, was at odds. We was at odds, man. Like, part of the reason why I am the way I am today with my confidence and how I move and how I talk is because I am going against so much. To have your own grandmother or have your own family member say you're not going to amount to anything, to tell, for them to tell you that you're going to end up in jail, for them to tell you that 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 you're going to end up in jail with somebody duping you up the butt for somebody to tell you that your life is pointless family mind you not even just enemies family um i've had to war against a lot i've had to battle against a lot I had, i've had to fight against a lot because when i'm going out and i'm traveling and i'm doing all the things that i'm doing these i'm glorifying god but at the same time these are the people who i'm fighting against these are the people who I'm trying to prove wrong um, in the most natural way, not a spiritual way. Um, so, like I was saying, for me to backtrack, I uh, moved in with a guy friend of mine. And um, he tried to do the same thing, try to take advantage of, of me. Um, knowing that I've, I've told him, and everybody that knows me knows this, I've never wanted to be with a guy. I love women. I've, I always will love women. I never had the thought of, hey, I'm about to be a homosexual. Or, hey, I'm going to entertain homosexuality. That never has crossed my mind, not even once. No matter how many bad breakups I've had, no matter how many times females have tried to play me, that thought has never crossed my mind. Um, it's not something I would ever perform, not something I would ever entertain because I'm so strong in what I believe in and I'm so against that. Um, I don't care who you are. So moved in with him and um, I began to have to take showers and stuff um, when he wasn't home because what he would do was he would try to wait till I'm coming out the bathroom like my uncle used to do and take advantage of me, not physically because at that point when I was with my old friend, I was a grown man. So he wasn't going to do that because I wasn't going to let that happen. But to try to touch various areas of my body and stuff like that while I'm coming out of the bathroom. Um, keeping heaters, because his house was very cold, because it was heated by oil, keeping heaters in his room so I would have to sleep in his room. Me trying to sleep on the floor and him constantly asking me to sleep in the bed with him. Um, so I got to the point where I got tired of the, the, the touching and stuff like that. And me and him literally almost fought one day. Um, and after that day, I got to the point where I was like, I have to escape from the situation. Um, it's crazy because I was, when I first moved in there, I was with my daughter's mother and I was telling her what was going on. And she literally came over there to, to his house and I had to stop her because at that point I didn't have a backup plan for me to get up out of there. At that point, there was no else for me to go because like I told you guys, I had already moved out of my grandmother's house and she was not letting me come back in there. So I had to find an, an exit strategy. Uh, I had to try to, to formulate one and I, had, I was rushing. So when she came over there and made a big deal, you know, me and her got in an argument and that's the day we actually really, really, really went downhill as far as the relationship was concerned. We really, really broke up, and that was the end of it because uh, I told her not to make a scene or whatever. She didn't understand why I was saying that. She didn't have a, a pot to piss in. She didn't have a place to, to, to live. Had she had her own place, I would have moved in with her, but she lived with her grandmother, and her grandmother's house was already full, so it was I was not moving in there um, because the grandmother was not going to allow me, and there wasn't no space anyway. Um, so 
I had to stop her before she said something to him because I knew if she, he found out that I told her, uh, he was going to say I had to go. So at that point, me and her stopped talking. So months went by. He he like it kind of died down a little bit. Then he started doing it again. At that point, I was I was with somebody else. So the girl I was with, she didn't have her own place either. But me and her mother was cool. So that was my exit strategy. After that, I moved out because I got tired of the touching. I got tired of the text messages while I'm in the same house about what you're trying to do. And just keep trying to force the homosexuality stuff on me. Knowing that I do not like that stuff. Knowing that I didn't want that. Knowing that it made me uncomfortable. You were, he began to text me constantly when I moved out when I started staying with her constantly when you coming back when you coming back I literally literally moved out literally and left clothes there it was so bad that I left clothes there I lost so many clothes in that house uh just by me not going back and getting my stuff um because I did not want to go back um it was a very very toxic environment and it was very very bad because had I stayed there I probably either would have killed him or he would have killed me um, these are situations that I've been through that you guys don't know nothing about, but it's crazy because folk look from far off, afar off, and they think they know you by what you post. They think they know you by what people tell them. They think they know you by these things, but nobody truly knows your story. They never really sit you down. They never really talk to you and really get to see why you are the way you are. How did you get to this point? What made you do that? What made you say this? What made you say that? Um, they never really ask and they never really want to get an understanding. All they want to do is really look from afar and they want to judge. Um, they want to assume that you're a bad person. They want to assume that you have issues. They want to assume that you're scarred. They want to assume that you're bitter. But they never really want to get to understand you or digest your story enough for them to understand your story. Um, so these are situations that I've been through, why I have the trust issues that I have and why I look at homosexuals the way I look at them today. Can't stand them. Uh, don't hate them, but can't stand them because, it, 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 because of what I'm telling you guys about now. That situation happens. And another situation happened was a guy that was, me and him was, we was tight. Um, and, 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 you know, um, at the point where he reached out to my mother, me and him wasn't even talking. So it was crazy to me why he texted my mom and asked my mom, can I come on a business trip with him? Because he was going on a business trip for his job. And I'm asking my mom, like, why he want me to come? Me and him ain't even talking. We ain't talked in months. Why he reaching out to, to, to you about me? So at that point, like I said, I've been traveling for a minute since I was a teenager. So he said something about Pittsburgh. And at that point, I hadn't been to Pittsburgh. This was actually my first time going to Pittsburgh was with him. So I was like, yeah, road trip, Pittsburgh, sure. Me and him was, we was, we wasn't on talking terms, but that was still my guy. So I was like, all right, cool, let's, let's rock out. So he came and got me from 69th Street. Um, those of you that live in Philly know what 69th Street is. Um, so pick me up, everything cool. We talking, we busting up, you know, talking like, you know, we've been, we never stopped talking. Everything's cool. On the road, maybe about two hours out, because those of you that know from Pittsburgh to Philly is about, from Philly to Pittsburgh is about five hours, close to five hours. So it's a, it's a good drive. So we on the road and he proceeds to ask me a question. And he was like, are you going to look at me differently if I ask you this? I said, no, nah, you're my bro. I mean, I, 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 ain't, I, I ain't about to judge in life. So he said, what would you say if I told you that um, I used to struggle with the homosexuality thing? And when I met him, I thought this about him. But then again, like I told you guys, I don't really assume if I don't know, I don't really put labels on people unless I definitively, definitively know that that's what they're dealing with. So I didn't really say, oh, yeah, you're gay. Like, I didn't really do that. I just was like, well, it's a thought um, on my mind or whatever. So he said that and I was like, you used to? I said, well, if you used to, then, hey, I mean, I don't think nothing of it. I mean, that's your life. I mean, that's what you dealt with. That's what happened to you. Then, hey. Um, I'm glad you, you got past that because you know that's wrong. And this guy is an elder. He's an elder now, but he was a minister at the time. We both was ministers. Um, so I was like, nah, you, you, you good. I mean, if it's not a situation you're dealing with now, you're fine. Um, so then driving, driving, we're listening to reggae because he's Jamaican too, just like me. So, you know, we both love reggae. So 
he turned the music down and asked me another question. He said, I got something else to ask you. I said, all right, shoot, what, what else is it? So he's like, so what would you tell you, what, what would you say if I told you that um, I used to look at you that way? Now, when he first said it, I'm like, look at me that way, like what you th- thought I was gay, or look at me that way, like, oh, you want to try me. He said, look at you like I want to try you. So at that point, I started getting really, really uncomfortable. And I told this story, told, told, I've told this story a couple times, but at that point, I started getting really, really uncomfortable. Because I'm just like, dude, me and you are like best friends, and you're saying this to me, and I'm getting uncomfortable because you know everybody knows this. That's why it just blows my mind why people be attaching this to me. But whatever, I don't really care anymore. But I'm just like, yo. So at that point, I'm ready to go home. We're already close to Pittsburgh. So I'm like, all right, let me just chalk it, get through this weekend, go back home. So we on the road. We get to the hotel. Now, mind you, before we get to the hotel, before we even get on the road, I asked this man, I said, make sure it's two beds in there because if it's not, I'll sleep on the floor. I'm not sleeping in the bed. Now, yeah, I told you guys this in the beginning. I think I did, but I didn't sleep in the bed with my brother. So if I ain't sleeping in the bed with my brother and I was weird like that, what makes you think I'm going to sleep in the bed with my friend um, who I've never really been around? Like me and him traveled together, but we never like stayed overnight anywhere. So yeah, I wasn't doing that. So he was, I, we go in the room. It's one bed in there. So, this emoji. But, I didn't say nothing to him. I just said, yo, bro, I'm going to sleep on the floor. He was like, no, nah, no, nah, you sleep in the bed. I said, no, nah, this is your trip. You're here for your job. I don't want nobody to sleep on the floor. And it's their, it's their trip. So, I said, I'll sleep on the floor. He, so, we was going back and forth about it. And I was like, hey, it's not nighttime yet. So, that's not... I don't really want, you know, that's, we focus on, because he had a meeting. I was like, focus on what you got to focus on. We'll focus on that later or whatever. But I don't mind sleeping on the floor. But I was mad because I asked him this. He said, no, I'm going to get two two beds. So I didn't bring my sleeping bag. I could have easily brought a sleeping bag. But I didn't bring it because he said he was going to make sure it was two beds. I was like, all right. All right. So he had a laptop. At that point, I didn't have a phone at the time. And um, I was with my daughter's mother. Um, this is before the last situation, actually. So I was with my daughter's mother, and I was talking to her on Facebook. We was talking to Messenger, writing, writing, and talking and talking, or whatever. So we was writing. I was asking what she was doing and this and that. So we was talking. So it got late. I think he went out to drink. It was a couple bars and stuff near the hotel where the hotel was. I think he went out to drink. And I don't think I know he went out to drink. So I'm in the hotel room, and um, I started getting tired. Got in the bed. Because he wasn't there at that point. When he came in, because I'm a light sleeper, I was going to get on the floor. For some reason, I don't know if I was tired or not, but uh, I didn't wake up right away. I didn't wake up till I heard the bathroom door close. So I, I got up, and uh, what did I get up and do? I got up, yeah, I got up and got on the computer because I had fell asleep. I wrote Jasmine, and I was like, yeah, uh, I'm about to go sleep. This and that, this and that. Uh, she wrote me back. I'm like, all right, bet. So I got back in the bed. So... Lane be laying in the bed. Now, mind you, the bed was was big. It was like wide. So, I was always on the other end. Mind you, I was so close to the edge of the bed, I was about to fall off the bed. So I'm on the edge of the bed. So then he was like, "Bro, you good? I'm not gonna do nothing to you. This and that. I wouldn't do that. This and that." I'm like, "Cool. I know. I just don't feel comfortable." So I'm laying there. He's not in the bed yet. So mind you, I didn't even. He gets okay. He moved so fast. He got in the bed, right? So, at that point, I'm about to get up. But he wasn't near me when I looked over. So, I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to stay here. Because I was, like, really, really tired. And I honestly didn't really feel like getting up at the time. But I was going to get up because I was not sleeping in the bed when I refused. So, what he does, what he did was he took his hand. Um, I'm not sure if it was left or his right. And he embraced my head. He caressed my head like a woman would do, like a brush, like a like a slight brush. And I remember, I didn't punch. What I did was I swung my hand back, and I swung so hard, like I didn't hit his face, which I was aiming to, but I hit the bed, and I hit the edge of the the bed, the bed. I hit something. I don't even remember what the edge of the bed what, but I swung back. And I hit something real hard, and it hurt my hand so much. So at that point, he got up, and he was like, yo, why are you trying to hit me? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? And I told you, I'm not with that gay stuff. 
I told him. I told him this. So I get in the I get on the floor. <laughs> that point after we after we argued for like ten minutes, I got on the floor. Next day comes. He wakes up. He apologizing like, bro, I'm sorry. Um, I won't do that again. This and that. I'm like, all right, bro. I'm just trying to get this weekend over. I'm trying to go home. Didn't tell my mom. What I did was got up, wrote Jasmine. I'm like, yeah, I'm up, this and that. Let me tell you what happened last night. So I'm telling her. He's like, all right, bro, I'm about to go. I got to go to a meeting because he had to get up and go to a meeting downstairs um, first thing in the morning. Um, so he had already left. And I'm writing Jasmine. So I look and I get hit a the messenger. It wasn't Jasmine's message. So I look and open the other folder. It was him messaging me, said, yo, how about I had a dream that I was giving you head or I was sucking you off? I'm not going to say the word because... It still is a Christian channel. But um, he was like, how about I had a dream that would give you a head? So I started cussing him out. I'm like, yo, bro, I'm trying to go home. I said, don't say the gay stuff to me. Next time you say something gay to me, I'm punching in your mouth. So then I immediately wrote Jasmine. Now, he knew Jasmine because Jasmine invited him to dance at her church. Way before me and her even met. Because I met Jasmine on a black college tour. And she was telling me. Um, about miming because she was miming at the time she was telling me what mime she knew and I was like oh that's my bro and this and that so she, Jasmine already knew Tavon so what she did was she wrote Tavon oh I think she texted him I'm not sure she wrote him text him I don't know and was like you trying to turn my babe out so immediately this man comes back in the room storms in the room said why would you tell her this and that now she gonna tell everybody this and that I said I told him I said she ain't gonna tell nobody and I said you really shouldn't concern yourself with that because if you hadn't text me that this morning and if you hadn't tried what you tried last night I wouldn't have told her anything so he's mad and this and that so that whole weekend I started seeing a totally different side of this guy man like all the partying and stuff and being drunk and all the stuff he was doing I had never seen before so it put me in a situation where I, did, I wasn't scared, but I was very, very alarmed at all that was going on because never seen the side of him, never seen all the drinking, all the intoxication or the gay stuff, the homo stuff. I never seen it. So it's kind of basically like he took that opportunity to invite me down there just to try me. And this is why I don't trust a soul. I don't trust anybody because people have hidden agendas. They have motives and they have things that they're trying to accomplish and they don't care how they how they accomplish accomplish them as long as they accomplish them. Again, I'm gonna state this again before I close this video. I don't have an issue with homosexuals. I don't have an issue with y'all, to be honest with you. I don't like the sin, I don't like the act, but I don't have an issue to the point where it's just like, when I hate y'all, and you know, y'all y'all the y'all the worst. I want y'all dead, all y'all dead and stuff like that. It's not to that extreme. But when it's brought to me and it's brought in my area, in my environment, that's when it becomes an issue. Um, long as it's kept where it's at, we're good, we're fine, but I'm not going to pretend like I'm okay with it and I'm not going to condone it. If I had my church, it would not be allowed in my church. Now, you can get prayer and you can get some type of, of uh, solution to your problem or some way out of the situation that you're in. But as far as... Actually, I'm not even going to say you can't come to my church. You can come to my church, but you can't be on any, any auxiliary. You can't be up there miming. You can't be up there leading the choir, directing the choir. You can't even be in the choir. Um, there has to be some type of standards. So, um, I want to tell you guys these stories so you guys know um, what I'm saying. And one last thing before I close. It is stupid to assume someone is gay or homosexual because of how they talk or how they enunciate their words. If you don't have black and white proof that somebody is dealing with that or struggling with that, don't say anything. Because a lot of people that are going around saying this person is gay, that person is gay, don't have any proof. They're just going off what they hear or what they think they, they know. Um, I'm somebody who's very, very passionate, very, very sensitive, very, very emotional with my emotions on my sleeve. I wear my heart on my sleeve. This is just the way I am. And it makes me a good mind. It makes me a great mind. My emotions make me a great mind. And God gave them to me and I'm going to embrace them. But it's absolutely foolish for people to attach homosexuality to somebody just because they talk a certain way or just because they move a certain way. Um, not having, not dancing in a feminine way, 
not walking like a female, not doing female things as far as activities, but because you talk a certain way or because you may have had a few back and forth with women, it makes you homosexual. That's not the case. Um, some folk just have low tolerance for stuff and some folk just have speech problems. It doesn't make them gay. I have a lisp, a very, very uh, uh, clear one. Um, how I talk is because I have that. It has nothing to do with, oh yeah, well he's dealing with it or he's struggling with it or whatever. It's never that case. Um, I am unique. Um, I am anointed. I am Justin, simply Justin. Um, I can only be me. Um, if I was dealing with this thing, if I was dealing with that spirit, um, it would be in the open um, because I never fancied myself to care about what anybody how anybody feels about what goes on in my personal life. Um, I do what I want to do when I want to do it. So it's just important just to know that because a lot of people forget sometimes. If I was, trust me, everybody would know. The whole world would know. And I would not care what anybody thinks. But um, never judge a book by its cover. Make sure you read it through first. Um, getting to know somebody is the best thing in the world. Because once you get to know them and you get to understand what they've been through, you get to see why they are the way they are today. And you get to view them from another vantage point, you know, not just the regular Facebook, Instagram vantage point. Like, oh, yeah, I see. No, it doesn't go that way. Um, get to know people and you'll get a lot farther um, in life. Um and in your understanding. Um, always love regardless of what you agree with and disagree with. Love regardless. Um, yeah, I mean, me being molested when I was five and me dealing with these situations, they they scarred me, man. And I'm still getting past it. But and with God's help, I'm going to really fully be past it. And the wounds are going to finally heal after two decades and after... Uh, eight, seven years, you know, when these other situations happen. So that's the topic for today. Um, part three is going to be the closer. And I'm going to talk about something that is self-inflicted. It's something that I had did that I shouldn't have done um, on part three on Wednesday. But today we're just about the homosexual stuff and the molestation. So... I appreciate you guys. Um, Canada was awesome. And I thank God for the opportunity to travel and to do what I do. Um, but today is Monday, January the 21st. The next video will be Wednesday, January the 23rd. I love you guys. Keep me in prayer. And I'll do the same for you. Blessings.